Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to Ultima 7 Part 2, Serpent Isle. All right, let's see if uh, Flinda will uh, uh, tell us about the... Um... Okay, of course he is not there. I already checked to see if Flindo, if uh, uh, Pothos was home, and he is not. So, if Flindo is not there, maybe he is at his house. He is not. God damn it, people. Why do you not be where I want you to be? Maybe he's at the... Whoops. He's getting some breakfast. He is. There we go. Returned again. I understand now why Hawk did not wish to... Okay. Uh, thy promise. I have good news for thee, my friend. As promised, I have arranged for thee to meet with Mage Lord Filbercio. In fact, he plans to hold a banquet in thine honor. I am certain thou wilt find his means of summoning, of summoning thee very unusual. Go about thy business, and at the appropriate moment, the Mage Lord shall summon thee. Great. All right, goodbye. Cracker! So, at the appropriate time, we shall be summoned, huh? Probably have an army of automatons come bodily pick us up and move us, uh... Or he could teleport us. That works, too. Hello! Please be seated. We have been waiting for thee. I am the Mage Lord Filbercio. Allow me to introduce the others first. The others. First, my fellow members on the Council of Mages, Adept Gustachio. Thou needest not worry, my lady. We have brought thee here... We have brought thee here against thy will, but only that we may get to know thee. Thou art free to leave once this dinner is concluded. Quite right, Gustachio. And here is Adept Rodoluncia, whom I believe thou hast met. Ooh, gold bars. Filbercio is never lacking in social graces, my, la my lady. Now, if he only attended to the problems of Moonshade as he doth attend to his mistresses. Speaking of which... <coughs> also present as my dinner companion is the most charming Frigidasi. She, too, is a mage. Welcome to thee. These cursed teleportation storms have made travel so difficult that we are becoming isolated. It hath disturbed everyone, but it is good to see a new face. Good mages, this is the adventurer from a distant land whose arrival was foretold in our conjurings. Could she be responsible for the storms which plague the land? Or for the growing strangeness which, affect, which afflict our spellcasting? I hope not, my dear, that she is the solu- I hope, my dear, that she is the solution to our problems rather than the cause. Thou art a fool, mage lord. Our guest is most certainly a factor in the supernatural disturbances that are threatening our world. Let us question her now. Ex Ort Flam. Ow! Hey! How rude. Must thou? Ow! See here, Rodolincia, this stranger may have secrets, as do we all. But I will not condone treating a guest of the council like a criminal. Thou dost dare to interfere with my spells? Mage Lord, I demand that thou reprimandest this sorcerer. My dear, calm thyself. Perhaps our visitor shall tell us all without the use of force. If there is one thing I cannot stand, it is being hamstrung by petty politics. Thou art not half the man thou once wert, Filbercio. I bid you all a pleasant dinner. I have lost my appetite and I am leaving. But mark my words, I shall have my way. Goodbye, witch. Good riddance. And to think she was once a young and beautiful sorceress before her ambitious turned her cold and heartless. Pardon me. I beg thy pardon, mage lord Fabricio, but I have an urgent message for thee. I regret to report that mine attempts to locate any significant quantity of the reagent blood moss have, gone, have met with failure. Pothos, I should send thee to the dungeons and have the rats feed on thy carcass. Dear guests, I am afraid that I shall have to adjourn this pleasant repast. We haven't even eaten yet. I mean, I was I wanted to eat the horned fish or the demon heads. The friggin' demon heads? <laughs> the hell. 
Pothos and I must speak privately concerning important matters of state. I thank thee all for coming. Poof! Bye. Demon roast. That is indeed a demon roast. Ooh. Barrels. I see barrels and a chest. Oh my. Create food. Oh, oh man. Uh, it'd be a shame if, uh, you know, something uh, happened to uh, all these scrolls. You know, if someone just randomly came through and stole them all. I I'd, I'd, better, I'd better put them in protecti protective custody. Yeah, definitely. Protective custody. Excuse me. Thank you. Ah, he also has uh, one of the naked lady tapestries. Don't have the key. All right, let's see. It's wall, wall, wall. Oh. All right, we'll have to uh, take a look at that, actually. Could there be any levers in here? I do not see any. There's a fur pallet in front of the fireplace. Well... Seems like fun. Alright, looks like there's going to be a lever somewhere that's going to... Ah, I think I see it. Aha! <laughs> and the music changed. That's great. Don't. 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 Aha! Oh god, those look like they're going to be difficult to pick up. Definitely would have been easier if I had not destroyed the uh, thing, but that's the way it goes. There might be one more. Yep. Oh, more than one more. They're just... No, okay. Incidentally... Stones. That is, uh... It's one of the, uh, um, the rune... The virtue stones, but, uh, just called a stone. Well, let's put those uh, uh, those in protective custody as well. Pick broke. Oh, come on. Oh, wow. So we got a magic axe. Ooh, a fire sword. Nice. That is empty. Well, it wasn't cursed. It's a locked chest. Let's move it. All right, no one got mad. Good. Aha. 53. And 60. Well, I'll be uh, taking care of those. That's an interesting tapestry. Nice and glowy. There's a door out there, which leads to that little boat, but I don't think we want to do anything with that just yet. I think that uh, I will. Ha-ha! <laughs> now I rule! Um, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, those doors are locked. Ooh. Books to read! Nothing in there. We've got a scroll of translation, which of course we will take. The Dwellers of Serpent Isle by Byman. Uh, I think we might have read this one. But let's go with it. Let's read it anyway. One quarter of a millennium ago, the man Damon Lord British impressed upon the citizens of Sosaria his eight virtues. 
So a quarter of a millennium, 250 years. We know that we are currently about 200 years after Ultima 6, which means that uh, Ultima's uh, uh, 4 and 5, uh, 4, 5, and 6, all took place within 50 years of, well, Caesarea splintering and becoming uh, um, Britannia. Interesting. Um, impressed upon the citizens of Caesarea his eight virtues. Most of the citizens were deluded into believing that his way of life was just and fair. Some were strong enough to oppose his rule and fled to begin their own civilization, free of the oppressive autocracy. These brave folk, led by a mage whose bravery is now sadly forgotten, ventured out to sea with little idea as to their destination, only a firm belief that Lord British was a tyrant whose rule was not to be to tolerated. Erstam led them to a large island which was... in instantly christened New Sosaria. The land's name was changed shortly thereafter to Serpent Isle after the strange ruins found there. There were three principal groups who left Sosaria, the Mages of Moon, the chivalrous folk of the two Mo Montours, and the folk of the port city of Fawn. Each had their own reasons for joining in the emigration. The Mages because they felt that certain of Lord British's virtues were unrealistic, the Fawnees because Lord British had failed to acknowledge a ninth virtue, beauty, and the brave folk of Monitor because of their belief that courage ranked above all else. Yeah, I think we had read that. Was that? Yeah, that was that book. Okay. What is this book? Principles of Economics. We have definitely read that one. That was one of my favorite parts of this <laughs> Let's Play, actually. Uh, Weaving by Carlin. This is a... George Carlin? No. Uh, this is a complete source book for a variety of patterns. Included are patterns for clothing, blankets, quilts, and sheets. The introduction even includes a section on weaving one's own cloth. Take the bale of wood and spin it into the wheel. Uh, spin it on the wheel to make the thread. Once that is done, warp the thread across the loom and begin weaving. Shortly thou wilt have a nice length of cloth from which thou canst make a variety of useful things. For variation, you use different colored threads on the loom to create exciting patterns. You know, one thing that I do miss in this game versus uh, um, uh, the first game, Ultima 7, is uh, all the pants and shirts and dresses and stuff like that, because I'd like to see what those look like on the paper dolls. Um, but they did not include those. Uh, so that's a weaving book. The Art of Field Dressing. We've read that one. Brigio's Book of Astonishing Things. The Apothecary's Desk Reference. No Such Thing as Fairies by Gant. The House of the Unicorn by Gant. And The Crying Loot by Gant. Alright, well, we've read all of those. We can't get through here. Alright. Well, there is a key there. There's a teleporter. And other things. Well, we can go ahead and leave here now. Let's go see if Pothos is uh, um, at his house. Aha! He's home! Hey, Pothos! Yes, my lady. Yes, I remember thee from the banquet. Rodoluncia wanted to kill thee. Welcome to the apothecary shop. I am Pothos, the proprietor. Uh, tell me about the banquet. I apologize for disrupting the party, my lady. Normally, I wouldn't have been there. But I have been on a special errand for the mage lord. Um, wouldn't have been there. Well, it is true that I am a mage. I am not an adept. And Philbercio invites only adepts to his banquet as a, banquets as a rule. Um, you are not an adept. There are different levels of competence with magic, my lady. It is all based on what level of spells thou canst cast. I myself can only master the third level of spells. An adept can master the ninth level of spells. Only an adept can become mage lord or sit on the council of mages. So I make my living selling reagents to adepts. Uh, tell me about Philbercio. Philbercio is the mage lord, and the and thou wouldst do well not to forget that while thou art here, thou art in moonshade. Philbercio is a man of great passions. The mountains of freedom are a powerful argument against crossing him in any way. Uh, tell me about freedom. The name was meant in jest, I'm certain, for the mountains of freedom are a prison, milady. A prison meant to hold mage and mundane alike. It is said that if thou art sentenced to that terrible stone pit, and thou canst win thy way back to the outside world, then thou art free. No one will haunt, hunt thee for the crimes thou didst commit, commit before thine incarceration. The only problem is that none have ever won free, and Philbercio reigns unchallenged. Unchallenged? There is a little true crime here, milady. 
Most of the offenders that find themselves within the confines of freedom are there because they angered Phil, Phil Bercio in some way. It's a pretty horrible way of ruling. The very existence of freedom silences most of the Mage Lord's detractors. Uh, Stone Pit. The Mountains of Freedom are a mine that was shut down long ago when the quant quality of ore became profitless to dredge from the mountain's heart. Filbercio devised a new use for it and turned it into a prison. Now its value lies not in what is gotten out of the mine, but in what is put into it. Um, Errand? With these storms, I have had little trade with the mainland, so I'm nearly out of most reagents. Filbercio wished me to gather some blood moss for him. I tried, but these storms have brought fierce monsters into that area, and I'm no adept to deal with them. Filbercio threatened to throw me in the mountains of freedom if I did not obtain if I do not obtain the blood moss. I trade my dearest secret to be able to find some blood moss. Uh, tell me about uh, Stoneheart. How didst thou come by that? No, I I did not ask that. I do not want to know. Dost thou know that possession of that stone is forbidden? Dost thou know how much certain adepts would pay for the reagent that stone produces? A uh, reagent? It produces blood spawn when mixed with a quantity of blood. Well, I am getting ahead of myself. If thou hast a ritual bloodletting device, which is technically forbidden as well, even though everyone has one, thou must fill a small container with blood. Then thou must use the blood on the stone heart. This produces the blood spawn that thou wilt need for death spells. Thou must be very careful. It is very powerful. Uh, forbidden? Prolonged exposure to stone heart causes insanity, milady. And to have the type of power that the reagent makes in the hands of a madman is unthinkable. Of course, as an apothecary, I could buy it from thee and find a buyer or two with clearance to possess it. I could make thee a good offer, say 120 guilders. Wilt thou sell it? Nope. I shall not tell anyone that thou hast the stone heart, milady, but thou shouldst be likewise discreet. Okay? Um, tell me about Rodoluncia. Like Philbercio, Rodoluncia do doth have a will of steel and a fiery temper. She is convinced that some outside for force is responsible for these abominable storms. She hates thee because she thinks that thou art keeping knowledge from her. It isn't anything personal, milady. It's awfully personal, actually. Uh, force? Well, to be precise, I should say that she suspects a recent visitor, a mage named Batlin. I'll grant that he came through asking all sorts of questions and badgering people to sell their serpent teeth. But I fail to see how she thinks he doth have anything to do with the storms. Oh, I'm sure he has something to do with the storms. Even if peripherally. And I'm afraid that she thinks all strangers are in league with Batlin. Of course, it doth not help that he had, a, had that daemon either. Uh, storms? Definitely magic-born, no doubt about it. Anyone caught outside during one, of the, during one risks being teleported into oblivion. Gustachio hath been working on finding a way to stop, this, stop the storms, but so far he hath not had any luck. Mayhaps now that Mortegro is helping him, they'll find the answer. I certainly hope so. Moonshade is isolated until they do. Tell me about Batlin. Uh, little fat man, small beard and mustache, angry scowl. I'm sure thou wilt remember him if thou hast met him. Oh, do I ever. Still owe him for not being able to kill him. Not a particularly nice person that I recall. Seemed like any other adept, used to getting in his way and angry if thwarted. I dealt as little with him as possible. Uh, questions? Batlin seemed very interested in learning more of the history of the ancient people of this land, the ones we call the Ophidians. As I am far from my days as a novice, I do not remember all that the Magister taught us. I wasn't much interested in then or now. I sent him to Feta Biblio. Uh, Serpent Teeth? Tis a tradition, my lady, to steal some small item from the Mad Mage to prove that thou art a worthy mage. A particularly favored item to purloin is a serpent tooth from the Mad Mage's collection. As far as I know, they are useless. But Batlin certainly wanted to purchase them. No one would sell. Who knows? Perhaps he hoped to make some sort of deal with the Mad Mage for them. A uh, daemon? Yes, Batlin had a daemon wandering about as, at his heels. As tame as thou couldst please. Did his bidding without a word. Big, big, ugly red creature. Uh, I think you're talking about a gargoyle. A gargoyle? What are you talking about? Th th they're what you call daemons. They're, they're not actually daemons. There are other daemons. They're from offworld. Tis just the thing to catch Rudolincia's eye. She's a very, she's very interested in learning to tame a daemon for her personal servant. She was quite put out that Batlin wouldn't tell her how he had done it. But I'm sure Filbercio heaved a sigh of relief when Batlin refused to tell her. Everyone knows that Rodolincia would love to feed Filbercio to a daemon in small pieces. 
Uh, tell me about Gustachio. Gustachio is an adept that specializes in working with the weather, the power of nature, and all that. Gustachio said something about needing to learn as much about the storms as possible. Even babbled something about learning to see the colors. At least it sounded like babble to me. Uh, tell me about Mortegro. Mortegro is an adept that specializes in speaking with the dead. He doth not bind them to service or anything. He simply talks to them. Why Gustachio wants Mortegro's help, I'll never know. Unless the dead are responsible for the storms or something. Um, hmm, I wonder if there are any dead people that uh, they'd want to talk to. Maybe the Ophidians, but I don't know. Ophidians? As I told thee, I don't recall very much history. All I do know is that the ancients seem to have worshipped serpents. If thou wishest to know more, ask Fedebiblio. He's very learned on the subject. Ah, uh, tell me about Fedebiblio. Fedebiblio keeps the library here in Moonshade. All information, whether historical or magical in nature, finds its way, finds its way to his hands. He is also the teacher of the novices, so I'm certain that he will be able to help thee with the, with any questions thou mightest have. All right, let's change the subject. Why, certainly, milady. Uh, tell me about your apothecary shop. I sell everything that thou wouldst need to cast spells or do magic. Unfortunately, I have a very limited supply of most things right now. Um, I've got the strange wine. That can only be moonshade wine, milady. The rangers make it right here in the city with a magic wine press, naturally. Uh, apparatus. Tis, mage's, tis a mage's equipment, but I don't recognize the style. Every mage prefers something different from the others. This one isn't one I'm familiar with, but that's not that well. Con but I'm not that well connected. Thou shouldst ask Master Ducio, or better yet, Topo, if thou dost wish an answer. Uh, bloody hand. Ugh, please put it away. I do not need to look at it any more to be able to tell thee that it is the damnable product of Erstam's experiments. Is it any wonder that they call him the Mad Mage? All right, tell me about uh, the Rangers. The Rangers are nominally the city guards. They deal with any physical threats that aren't worthy of bothering a mage about. Their commander is a woman named Julia. Tell me about the Magic Wine Press. The Magic Wine Press is another piece of Erstam's legacy, milady. He always liked fine wine, but ha hated the work required to make it. So he made the Wine Press. Uh, tell me about Erstam. Erstam was a mentor of most of the adepts. He was a hard master, so they say. The popular story is that Erstam would never admit that any of his students were ready to be called adepts in their own right. Apparently, he wanted the free labor for as long as he could have it. Each one rebelled against him, until he became angry and withdrew to his own little island, forswearing any company but that of his assistants. Alright, tell me about Ducio. Ducio is a master artisan. His work is incredibly good, when he does any work at all. Most of the time, he leaves the work to his apprentice, but I know for a fact that he makes all the, all the lab apparatus for the adepts. He should be able to tell thee who this piece belongs to, if he's awake, that is. Uh, tell me about Topo. Topo is the unfortunate boy that Master Duceo took for an apprentice. He is the one that does all the work in the shop. Despite Duceo's sloth, Topo seems to have quite a bit of talent and promise. In fact, everyone in Moonshade hath learned to go, go to Topo if they need anything. The service is quicker and much friendlier. Uh, experiments? Erstam seeks to find the secret of to creating life. I surmise that it's his attempt at immortality. Even spells fall to the ravages of time in the end. Unfortunately, Erstem's quest for knowledge hath been at the, at the sacrifice of his assistance. Vassal hath sidestepped the inevitable much longer than I would have expected. Vassal? Vassal is Erstem's latest assistant. He is, grinning, he is a grinning hunchback that I had not given credit for much intelligence. But he seems to be more cunning than even Erstem anticipated. Tell me about Julia. Julia is a rather forbidding woman. Always seems to be looking for thy secret desire to cause trouble, if thou knowest what I mean. She's quite competent, but not overly warm. I've actually seen her rebuff the Mage Lord's advances. A formidable woman indeed. Tell me about the Mad Mage. What else wouldst thou call the man, man who hacks his assistants to pieces for his experiments? That is another reason that, the, that he lives apart from the other mages. He will never bow to their strictures. And I doubt that any of the adepts in Moonshade could hope to enforce them anyway. Okay, uh, what do you have for sale? What dost thou need? Uh, magic items. What magic items wouldst thou care to buy? Uh, magic leggings, magic boots, magic axe, sword of defense, magic bolts, or a glass sword. Wow, 1,500 guilders. Nope. Okay, uh, yes. 
nothing buy potions Sleeping Potion, Healing Potion, Light Potion, Curing Potion, Awakening Potion, Protection, and Invisibility. So a black... Well, let's see. Uh, so that's a blue, yellow, uh, white, uh, red, orange, purple, and black. Okay. Nothing. And goodbye. Come again. Uh, don't mind your, uh, destroyed, uh, automatons there. Where the hell did you go? He's like... He vanished! Let's go ahead and eat. Ah, there he is. Must have passed me. Oops. Alright, what else can we do? Um... I suspect that Rodoluncia is going to do something to us uh, soon. Alright, she's not uh, saying anything to us yet. Maybe Gustachio will talk to us now that we've had our... Uh Nope. He will not talk to us yet. Okay. Well, I'll go talk to Feta Biblio again about some uh, various things. Perhaps. Uh. Or not. Okay. Hmm. Will this guy talk to us yet? Nope. You have anything new to say? Uh, apparatus? Zounds, I don't know. Tis like nothing I've seen before. Eh. Oh wait, do see his whereabouts. I haven't a clue except that I'm here doing all the work and he's not. Hmm. So he seems to have vanished. Interesting. Is the mage lord around, perhaps? Ah, yes. Good. Tis thee again. Hast thou good news? Uh, duties? As thou hast no doubt noticed, the burden of being mage lord weighs heavily upon me. I spend all of mine hours at, in the palace. I have no life of mine own. I seldom even research new spells. Uh, burden. Indeed! Sometimes I think that my sh subjects do not appreciate me. They have given me wealth and power, but I have given them my life. Now is that a fair exchange? Perhaps I shall go live in a hut on the coast. That would be less stressful. Uh, palace? Is this not a grand old building? Most of the downstairs chambers are used for business of the court, while well, the remaining rooms are mine, mine own. Never mind the legends of hidden treasure chambers here. If there were gold here, I would have, I would have it by now. Um, I've, I've already found it. Uh, I, I mean, yes, you're right, absolutely. Uh, life. It is lonely to be the mage, to be mage lord. I have needs, I have the needs of a normal man, yet I am overwhelmed by the demands of the citizens. I am grateful for thy sympathy, ma madame. I too am attracted to thee. Ah, thou didst not think I noticed thy glances. Uh, what what glances? I I think you might be thinking of someone else. But alas, I am spoken for. The sorceress Frigidazi is my current love, and she allows me no trespasses. And I am jealous of her affections as well. I have found that women are notoriously fickle. Uh, spells? Hmph. <laughs> "'Tis beneath my station to teach thee or any other the awesome knowledge that is mine alone. Go in Badger Melino or Columna, if thou dost wish to learn the arcane arts.' "'Okay. Change subject. But we were only beginning. Very well, if thou dost insist. Tell me about politics. Is there no end to the bickering among the mages?' "'We have three factions here, and each elects its favorite to the Council of Moonshade. As the... The voice of compromise and experience, I have always been selected Mage Lord by the Adepts. 
My fellow lords are Rodolinci and Gustachio. Tell me about uh, Gustachio. Gustachio doth adhere too strictly to outdated codes of ethics. Why, we could accomplish nothing in Moonshade if we followed his advice. I doubt that he will even dine to speak with thee. He is of the old school, and speaks only to those he considers worthy of his time. Until thou hast proven thyself, he shall have little to do with thee. Well, that's kind of douchey of him. Uh, what about Rodolincia? <clears throat> the sorceress Rodolincia is the heart of dissension. She is ambitious beyond measure, and causes all manner of trouble. She was not always this way. I remember the summer of my last apprenticeship year. She was two years younger than I, and asked me to be her tutor. Ah, but she did tutor me as well that summer. There have been many loves before and since, but I shall always remember Rodolincia. Let's change the subject. And goodbye. Hmm. Well, what if we go back and talk to, uh, what's his name about the, uh, Blood Moss? But the, hey! Um. Well, I wasn't quite expecting to end up behind the stairs there. Uh. Hmm. Well, I thought I needed to give him, uh, blood moss. I'm gonna need to go take a look at something and, uh, figure that out. Um. I'll do that off screen. Uh, it is the end of the episode anyway. Uh, we shall see you all in the next episode. See you then, everyone.